Hello class, after seeing your most recent drawings, I wanted to send you all a video that goes over a couple different strategies for cultivating detail in a drawing and for uh, getting nice sharp edges. I also wanted to show you how you use the blending stems, which were an optional material in my material list, um, as well as show you an alternative to the blending stump that you can make with just newsprint and any pencil or pen. So. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is a couple strategies for getting a nice sharp edge to uh, a part of your drawing. So I'll just be working pretty abstractly um, just to demonstrate the way you would use these materials. And so the first strategy I'm going to show you is how you can use painter's tape to get a nice clean edge. And the first thing I want to point out is just I pressed this against my pants a couple of times. And that was important because if you don't, it's too sticky. It might rip up the paper if you uh, don't take off a bit of that stickiness by pressing it against your clothes. So once the tape is on there and you can uh, apply material along the edge and I'm pressing with very firm pressure. So just keep in mind when you wanna go dark in a drawing, you really need to apply quite a bit of pressure. And so I'm gonna lay down some compressed charcoal. I'm going to blend it against the edge to remove texture. Um, I've noticed in some of your drawings, you're not blending enough, so you're leaving this texture for too many of the surfaces. This only makes sense for certain textures, and even so, with the white peeking out, that limits it even more for what it could be used for. So you want to start getting specific about the textures you leave, and oftentimes that requires building up more material in order to uh, make the kinds of textures that you want. So now I've got some material there. I'm going to pull off the tape and you can see it's a nice sharp edge. Um, and so you can plan uh, for it with the tape. And um, there's a similar strategy you can use to create a nice sharp edge is uh, running your material against the side of a ruler. And so or any hard straight edge. So again, I'm going to press with firm pressure, but this time I'm gonna do it alongside the edge of my ruler. So that also gives a pretty clean edge. And so another thing I wanna show you all is that if you're gonna use your fingers to blend, for something like a nice sharp edge, you never want your finger or your blending stump to hit that line. As soon as you touch this line, it's no longer going to be crisp. So you have to work really carefully. Um, so I just want to show you how I would blend this section to get this texture up and say fade this material over to the left. So I'm just being very mindful about where the edge of my finger is. And just making sure not to touch it. So the next thing I want to show you is a material a tool called the blending stump. And so this you can use to do fine detail, to blend fine detail. I'm not sure if you can see in this video, but there's a couple moments in the side of my straight edge that aren't blended and I wasn't comfortable pushing my finger all the way to the edge. So with the blending stump, I can have more control to carefully blend out the white textured spots that are still coming through. So the blending stump for sure gives you more control than blending with your finger. Um, and they come in all different sizes and they will get dirty. So I actually use the blending stumps to gently draw sometimes once I know that they're uh, dirty. Uh, but there, you can actually sand it down with sandpaper uh, to get it back to being clean again is the best strategy I have found for um, getting a nice clean edge to this. You can also rip the paper and peel it back, but I've not had much luck with that, so I just sand it down. Um, I want to cover the idea that you need to build up a lot of material before form starts to come through. So I'm just going to fill in this area. And for your homework this week, the imaginary landscape, uh, you might consider setting a ground with the compressed charcoal and then using the white pastel and the compressed charcoal to uh, really build out the full value range. I've noticed that a few of your grounds were quite faint and almost not there. And so you could try to compress to go a little bit darker at the beginning. 
So you can see it takes some material to get rid of the texture too. If I really want to get rid of the texture, I would need to apply it again. And because my finger oils and the pressure and the texture of the page has sort of absorbed that first layer, it's gonna let me go darker and create a more even texture. And sometimes to set a good flat ground with no texture, you actually need to put more material than you want and it'll go darker than you want it to. And then you can actually erase up and it won't have the texture but if I erased up before I built it up, it might show that texture more. So sometimes you can lay down an even coat and then evenly erase it up. That's one way to get rid of texture oh, that's unwanted. So sometimes your eraser gets dirty so you can rub it against uh, a surface. So I'm just rubbing it against plastic container. Now that it's lightened to the gray that I want, I might take a paper towel bit and even it out. So that's one way to get around texture. It's strangely enough, you have to put more material and then erase up to get it to be even. So uh, if you don't have the blending stumps and they're readily available at art supply stores and online, um, one alternative is that you can take uh, just any pencil or pen and wrap newsprint. So I just ripped a little piece of newsprint. And you can actually uh, wrap it carefully, starting from one end make sure that you get the tip of the pencil in the wrapping, catch the edge of the paper, and you want to tightly twist the paper around the pencil. And so now it's just a pencil that's been wrapped in the newsprint and you can actually use that in almost the exact same way that the blending stumps work. Just make sure that you're not scratching the paper. I'm actually gonna fold over the newsprint and try again. Because leaving a little bit of scratch mark, there we go. So folding it over and this is handling almost exactly like the blending stump does. And then you don't need to bother with sanding it. You can just wrap it to a new area. So this is what I recommend for blending um, for fine detail when the finger, when your finger is too large for that surface. So um, another strategy I wanna show you is that you can actually use your eraser to get a sharp edge in your drawing. And so um, I actually cut my erasers up so that way it will create a clean edge once it starts getting rounded. Um, but not only can you draw lines out with the eraser, but you can actually erase out against a ruler. And I'm using a lot of pressure and you can see if my eraser was not so dirty, it'd be a pretty sharp line. Um, so I wanna show you right now that the light is coming through from the back of the page and depending on how thin or thick the material is, the sense of light and shadow, you can begin to kind of play with. But a certain amount of material usually needs to build up to create convincing forms. So some of you are not using enough material on the page. So, that is racing out a nice sharp edge with the eraser. And lastly, I'll show you what I would do with the white Conti here. So let's just put in a spear. And I enjoy erasing out of a ground because it's easier to create convincing form quicker in my mind. 
and it's restricting the weight of the page. If you leave too much of the weight of the page, it really doesn't signify anything to the viewer. And so you lose a lot of believability. But once you set a ground, you're controlling all the values from the beginning. So I've got my little sphere here. Um, I'm gonna take the white content to try to carve out an edge. So I'm just gonna carefully, oops. And when it breaks, it's good because you have nice sharp corners to work with. So I'm pressing with pretty firm pressure on uh, where I want the highlighted side to be. And then let's take the blending stump. Just gonna wipe it off. And let's use the blending stump. And so again, I'm not touching the top edge of this because that will make it fuzzy. Oftentimes for realism, you need to apply the material a couple times. Uh, it's usually applying the material, working it into the tooth of the page, and then applying more. If you have the spray fixative, just follow the instructions on the can. You spray about eight inches to a foot away from the drawing and do it outside. It's toxic, uh, probably. Um, and then you let it dry. And once it's dry, once you sprayed an even coat over your drawing, it should let you pack on more material. So that's another tool that's useful. So I'm just showing you guys how I would use the blending stump. And making a fake blending stump with the newspaper wrapped around the pencil or using blending stump, it may be essential for a certain level of detail. Um, but everybody draws and paints in a different way and in their own unique way. So um, you may come up with a method for cultivating hard edges or blending that I haven't even covered and that's perfectly valid too. Um, that's part of your education in this. How do you think on your feet? Because there's always the element of the unexpected within an artwork and it's good to learn how to just adapt to what's happening in a piece. You know what variables you can control within a drawing, you know what materials you have access to, what tools, so if something's not working, you can always try something else. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you all is carving an edge out with the side of this charcoal on my form. So once you're happy with the edge of the form and I'm cutting in, is I gonna make it a lemon, I guess? And so that just created the effect of a cast shadow because it's darker than the ground. I'll use my finger to blend it first and I'm avoiding the edge. Oops, so my finger went over that edge a little bit. So I have to recarve it out again. But if you're combining the white Conti and the compressed, you can build up quite a bit of material and create some pretty great illusions of form. So then I'm gonna use my blending stump just to hit this edge. And then I'm gonna use the compress that's on the blending stump to darken the shadow area gently because right now it's not matching with the background anymore. It's too light inside the form. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of material. So I have one more trick for you. Um, if you have a paintbrush, a uh, paintbrush will act similarly to the blending stump and you can blend, you can apply material. With the paintbrush too. So I hope those tools are useful and I recommend that you try out these techniques and these ways of using the uh, materials uh, on your drawing this week because you're supposed to create a convincing space. This proportion's wonky.
make sure you're always looking at your drawing straight on because I have to film these and draw from the side a bit. My proportions get off because of the angle that I'm looking at my forms. One of my favorite tricks is putting the compressed around a form to make it pop out. It's one of the easiest ways to create depth. All right, happy drawing. <laughs>